guys, welcome back to the channel, Donna Up and Crease. My name is Nate Denise, for those of you who are new to the channel or who just happen to stumble across this video. And I post new videos every Wednesday all about my faith, God, Christ, and expanding the kingdom of God. And I do that through Bible studies, book reviews, discussions, and more. So as the title says above, this is my October wrap-up and my November TBR. Um, a little late, but it's okay. We just gonna, we gonna flow with it. Um, yeah. So I'm gonna take a sip of my cappuccino. I'm gonna dive right in. I don't want this video to be too long, but I had a pretty good reading month. I wasn't sure if I was gonna get through all of my books in October because October really was a heavy book reading month for me. Um, I didn't get to all the books on my actual TBR, but I did complete all of my Christian books that I wanted to complete, which was a plus. So the first one I have is Resuscitating Evangelism by Jordan and Ernest Easley. I finally, finally finished this book and I'm so glad I, I took my time reading this book. This book was phenomenal it was packed with some amazing information about evangelism and it doesn't just talk about evangelism from the position of being an evangelist but evangelism as the great commission that we were all giving all christians were given the commission to go and evangelize and make disciples and things like that and um the way they break it down the way they go in depth the way they use um different uh metaphors and things to really help us understand evangelism as a whole and the reason why evangelism is important and then they also discuss why discipleship and evangelism need to be working hand in hand and not one or the other because some churches are either really big on discipleship or really big on evangelism but they never have that kind of in between um and i just i love this book so much i highly recommend it to any christian looking for a really good book all about how to share the gospel and um do it even when you're afraid this was phenomenal i felt like i was slapped in the face sometimes when i was reading it like y'all know i talked about the first two chapters how i felt like i was slapped in the face but this i i highly highly would recommend i will not recommend a lot of christian nonfiction because a lot of the times i personally don't think that they're like a hundred percent useful if that makes sense but this is a book i think every christian should own because it's a small read but it's really hefty and meaty and what it's the information it's giving you and how it's explaining things um this everything everything and more five stars solid so moving on to my picks from the jar or the the cup as you will so the first one was read an aesthetically pleasing book hopefully it is focusing read an aesthetically pleasing book that was the first one and um for that i went with pearl and sand 10th edition by tessa apshar <laughs> five stars do we have to if you don't know if you're new to the channel hi um i am a tessa afshar stan i literally own all of her books and her bible study um i i love her work it's amazing i've given all of her books a five star except for one i gave one of her books a four star and i've tried to read that book multiple times and still can't give it more than a four but i love all of her books her books are phenomenal her writing is amazing she was one of the first biblical fiction authors that really like called out to me and um this book spoke so much to me because it does talk about um sex at a young age um not rape per se but sexual harassment and um it's basically a re biblical fiction retelling of the story of Rahab and um it is definitely amazing and it really talks about our worth in God's eyes versus our own eyes because I know that there are things that we can do in our lives where we feel like we're un we're, we're not um worth the cost for God when we feel like we're not enough for God but this book really if you saw my reading block and the reading block is a non-spoilery one so you can watch it even if you haven't read the book I don't spoil much of anything in that block so you can go watch that but um you'll see that there is a specific chapter in this book that makes me cry that there is a um specific chapter in this book that really just makes me cry and pulls at the heartstrings and I I highly recommend this just just go get it okay just get it and the reason why I picked this one is because the 10th anniversary edition is stunning like I love the rose gold foiling on here the model is amazing I love the cord and the spine is just the back the inside is just as pretty um there is this red cord on the inside and during the page breaks or like the chapter breaks there is like a red cord so everything about this is aesthetically pleasing to me it's like just amazing and feels good so that was the book for that and i gave it five stars okay so the next book uh the next prompt actually was to read a book with a necklace on the cover and um for christian fiction this was actually hard to do honestly i'm not gonna lie it was hard to do because 
most of the time when you're reading biblical fiction, they don't wear jewelry. Um, and then the historical fictions, they're really not wearing much of any type of jewelry. And then my contemporaries, they normally just have the face of the model. You don't see their neck. Or if I'm reading a suspense, it's like the woods and things like that. So it was really hard. So I had to go with... I had to do a little improv, okay, with this one. And I went with Hair Burns My Candle by Liz Curtis Higgs. She's wearing a choker. And um, this is a historical fiction retelling loosely based on the story of Ruth or the book of Ruth in the Bible. And um, this has taken place in 1745, I think it is. 1745 Edinburgh. Yeah, 1745 Edinburgh. And shockingly enough, I like this. Um... Now, I've read from Liz Curtis Hicks. I've read more of her non-fictions. I have not read any of her fiction. So this was my first forte in Fourier in her, into her um, Christian fiction. And I loved it. <laughs> um, this is a duology. So the second book is... Um, I can't remember the, the title of the second book. It's on the screen. I do own it. I will be reading it. But um, this blew my mind. The writing was epic. The characters were epic. I loved the dynamics. Elizabeth. So it basically follows different characters um within the Kerr family there is Elizabeth her husband Donald we have Marjorie who is the mother then you have Andrew who is the brother of um Donald and Janet who is the wife of Andrew and you're following them and in this you have the J Jacobites I think that's what they are the Jacobites um which are Highlanders and then you have the Lowlanders and it's it's an interesting story to say the least it's very interesting um i was in here having my feels because the, the situation between elizabeth and donald i was like oh child oh child and then the relationship between marjorie and elizabeth and janet was it was crazy um but you definitely do see bits of ruth you see a lot of ruth in um elizabeth's character with marjorie you don't see too much of naomi until the end but i love the use of scripture in this book phenomenal phenomenal top tier um and as far as orpa you don't see too much of orpa until the end um as far as relation to elimelech he's dead in this book so marjorie's husband is dead and then she has andrew and donald who are going to play Ma malin and Killian, and um you do see them die eventually throughout the story but uh this was really good i don't it was good it left me stuck at the end so at the end of this is basically like the end of chapter one um in the book of ruth where uh naomi and ruth decide to go back and orpah leaves so in this book it is elizabeth and um, marjorie who decide to go back to marjorie's um homeland so i'm excited for the sequel for my five star rating i love the audiobook i loved reading it it was very easy to get into i did not find that it was difficult to read so i'm definitely excited to finish this up um, it's only two books and then she has another series which is based on Rachel and Leah and it's called Galloway of Old and the first book is Thorn in My Heart so it's a four book series based on the story of Rachel and Leah um so yeah I'm excited for it I'm excited so yeah this was amazing amazing I'm glad I picked it up because I wasn't sure how I was gonna like it but um the last prompt that I had was to read a book about good versus evil read a book about good versus evil hopefully that's zoom okay yeah so for that i had three books so the main book i wanted to focus on was desecration which is book nine in the left behind series gave four stars um this was interesting it was really really good um i hate carpathia i say this every time i talk about the series i hate carpathia um i hated him even more in this book like even more i hated him but um i still love the tribulation force i love them all um there were some things that were taking place with baby girl chloe is her name chloe i don't know why i want to say chloe is that her name i think it's chloe yeah chloe and um buck it's just it's a lot going on it's a lot going on and i'm excited to finish this off it's a 13 book series i finished book nine i'm gonna be reading book 10 this month so i have three books left to go and i'll be done with this series which is crazy um and i started it back in january so that's the version was good i gave it a four star already um so this is good versus evil i'm not gonna explain it it's book nine but the series as a whole is basically all about the tribulation um era the book of revelations the seven year tribulation that's what it is um the book of revelations and things like that so the rapture all that good series it's, it's a four star series for me really good um, the other book that I had on that list was The Girl Behind the Red Boat by Ted Decker and Michelle Decker, his daughter. I had read this before. The first time I gave it a five star. Upon second reread, I gave it a 4.5 only because those thriller aspects didn't really 
get me the second time around just because I read it and I kind of had the story fresh in my mind but um I still love this book this book really focuses on our fears and how we allow our fears to keep us bound up um and how the enemy likes to play on our fears and <laughs> chef's kiss I did a reading vlog on this it's non-spoilery you can watch it to be honest we're gonna go watch that but um yeah this was really good I loved it for it's a 4.5 star reading upon second reread but it's still a five star like it's a five great read um and then the other book oh and this is just our fears which is like the evil versus us good if that makes sense um and then i read nine by rochelle decker again the same author of the co-author of this rochelle decker is the daughter of ted decker um and upon my first read i gave it four stars i think and um i read it really quick i didn't really take the time to like take it in upon second reread there definitely is a major connection at first i thought it was like a little connection but i guess i didn't remember much about the characters but there's a major connection to the girl behind the red rope and I'm, I'm glad because it was a character in the girl behind the red rope that I felt so bad for it. baby girl made me cry um and in this book you get to see her as an adult living out her life after the aftermath of what took place in the book of the girl behind the red rope gave it four stars just because I wanted a little bit more I loved Zoe in this she's the main character in this book I loved her I loved Lucy I really enjoyed the sort of thriller aspects and suspense mystery plot to it. It was really, really great. Um, and I think this is definitely a good standalone, but also a great follow-up to one of the characters from The Girl Behind the Red Rose. So this was excellent. So um, I gave that four stars. So like I said, I had a pretty great reading month. Um, everything was pretty much four stars and up, which is great for me. So... We're going to move on to my November TBR now and um, I wasn't going to do the TBR cup only because I really want to take this month to focus on all of the review items that I was sent. Um, not from publishers but from actual authors and I feel so bad because something told me to recently go through my emails and look at any emails that were sent to me regarding reviews and I had so many that I didn't get a chance to get to throughout the last year or two and I feel terrible about that so for the month of November I'm really trying to focus on like those review books that I was sent um recently in years prior to so I wasn't gonna do the TBR game but I'm gonna do it and try to piece those books into the TBR game but I'm only gonna pull three books for this month so I have my little cup here and we just gonna we're gonna we're gonna you know mix it up and we're just gonna grab one so I normally grab four because I always have, no, I'm going to do three pulls because I always technically have two automatic books, which is my continuation of um, the Left Behind series and then my buddy Lee with my sis, of course. So I automatically have two, so I'm going to pull three for this month. Starting next year, I'll be pulling four because I'll be done with the Left Behind series, but here's the first one. Um, and the first one, please be something I can use, color generator. Hmm. I, can, I can actually do this. So use a color generator. You gonna focus? Are you gonna focus? Not on me. Focus on it. No, I don't. I don't know how to do this because it's it's not gonna focus. Okay, use a color generator. So that's the first one. I I can work with that. I can work with that. Okay. Um, next one. The next one is here. Give me something I can work with. Give me something I can work with. Read the highest rated book on your shelf. Okay. Um. Mm. okay so it's read the highest rated book on your shelf i'm trying to get it to focus on this and not me it's kind of hard to do that okay here we go does that work yeah read the highest rated book on your shelf i don't know how that's gonna work out i don't think I, any of these books are gonna fit on that okay well no maybe a book will we'll see um and then last one i'll go to the bottom it fell let me grab it <laughs> okay so it's here it fell on the floor and please be something else i can work with please please read a book outside of your comfort zone why i'm gonna cheat i'm sorry i'm not gonna do this one it's my game my rules Shh, don't tell nobody but um i'm not gonna do this one only because like i said i want to really make sure i'm pro prioritizing these books so i'm gonna put that one to the side and put it back in 
the, the cup but i'm gonna get another one and hopefully this one isn't as bad okay i'm getting another one what does it say read a pastel book what it says read a pastel book i don't all right we're just gonna stick with it so i have using a color generator we have that we have read the highest rated book on your shelf and then we have read a pastel book mind you i already have a stack of books in front of me so we're gonna try to figure this out so what i'm gonna do now is go look on my bookshelves for books that fit this prompt if they don't fit the prompts on my shelf that's on my tbr already and i'll be back with what i'm gonna be reading for the month of november okay guys so i just went to go get my nook um because we gotta pull it out i tried to use my old phone but it's just, it's coming on and then cutting off. Um, this phone has issues, so we're just going to put that to the side. So I did pull up Goodreads already, and I also put up um, a color generator. So I am going to go with randomcolor.org. I mean, random.org. And whatever color pops up is the color, I guess. Brown. Brown? Oh, I got it. So we have brown for the color so i'm actually going to write that down um on pen and paper with pen and paper excuse me so it's brown and the number is because i'm actually going to look it up to figure out what color it is like nine eight five eight four nine so we have brown okay that looks like a light brown to me like a nice light brown so i'm just going to copy that paste it here and see what it pops up as. It's like a nice in-between light shade of brown. They call it copper rust, apparently. So it's copper rust. Literally, that's what it says, copper rust, if you guys can see. Copper rust, but it looks just like a light brown to me. Um, so it's gonna be a light brown coppery color so we have that um for that one the next one was to read the highest rated book on your shelf um so goodreads got my goodreads popping up if it'll pop up come on okay goodreads um i'm going to go to my want to read shelf no why did you pop open that's not what i wanted <laughs> it opened up nine <laughs> um technology can sometimes be aggravating okay i'm gonna do average rating and it has to be average rating for like a fictional book not a non-fiction because we're not doing it um okay so the first one is actually praise and declaration for the woman of god by michelle mclean walters which i do own but i that's a non-fiction um the second one is zamira dreamwalker by susan Susan Velez, Velez, um, but it's a sequel, and I haven't read the first book. Um, then we have Jennifer Jennings, which I have read her first book, and it's Wilder Wilderness Wanderer. Um, it's the second book in the Faith Finders. I think I read the first book. I know I read it because I read two books from her so far. I think I read the first book, and I have Wilderness Wanderer already. Yeah, so I'm gonna go with that one. So we have Wilderness Wanderer. I'm just writing it down so I know. Okay, so now I'm going to go grab all the books and we're going to figure this out together. So I'll be right back. Okay, guys, so I'm ready to discuss my very, very long TBR with you all. Pray for me. Um, but we're going to dive in. So the first book is a nonfiction that I'm going to be reading. And it's Victory Over the Darkness, right? Yeah, by Neil T. Anderson. Um, you guys would have saw this on my Instagram when I asked you guys to help me pick a book to read. And this was one of the books I didn't want. Um, so yeah, it's Realize the Power of Your Identity in Christ. I did start it in October. Um, I only got to chapter two, through chapter two. So I read chapters one and two. But um, as you can see... I don't know if this is gonna like show well 
I am marking and writing in the book <laughs> so it's really good thus far um so I do want to complete it it's not that long um there are about 12 chapters um so I would say a chapter a day but I'm not even going to go there because I've, I've been noticing that I've been trying to rush through my non-fictions and I don't want to do that I want to take my time I want to enjoy it I want to absorb it a lot so I'm taking my time I'm not going to say that I'm going to finish it in November but I would like to probably won't finish it through December we'll see but um this is the first book definitely on my TBR um and then I have some sort of like bible studies that I want to do that are like devotion wise because I'm still going to be doing my personal bible study which I'm not sure what book I'm going to be doing next um I might go back into Mark or I might just do another letter in um the New Testament not sure yet um I'm currently on Tuesdays doing my church bible studies which is from 8 to 9:30. And then I have the Bible studies that I'm doing with Tessa Abshaw, which is from 7.30 to 8.30. So that has been phenomenal for me. Um, my church, we're going through um, just studying up on grace. And with Tessa Abshaw, we're doing her actual The Way Home Bible study. So that I need to um, continue on with. But I have these Bible studies that are going to be like morning devotionals for me. Because I haven't really been keeping up with the Bible app. If you guys follow me on the Bible app, you can see my streaks have been like terrible. Because I just... With this quarantine, I just have been all about my physical Bible and not so much the Bible app and their reading plan. So, I have five studies. Um, The first two I've actually done already. Actually, the first three I'm going to discuss I've done already multiple times. Um, So, the first two were actually sent to me for review from, I think her name is Brianni Shut. I hope I'm saying it right. Please correct me if I'm saying your name wrong. But um, she sent me two of her studies, one on the Minor Prophet and one on the um, Epistle of Paul. And I've done them both. But I just never talked about it on the channel and totally forgot. So what I did do was print them out. Um, the Minor Prophet is on Obaziah. Um, so I'm going to be doing this. And I'm actually going to make a video out of this. Like doing these with you guys. And then I have the one on Philemon. Which Philemon is like 24 verses. And um, they're both, both really good. The printables. I think this one is like 18 pages. This one is 14 pages long. Um, and it's well written. Great questions. Um, definitions involved in everything. And um... I just totally forgot to even talk about it on the channel because like I said I've just been overwhelmed with so much stuff and it wasn't until God said look through your emails that I looked through and saw that I was behind on so many things so I do have them here oh my eyes are changing. but um these are the first two I'm going to be tackling devotional wise um for the month so the one on Philemon and the one on Obadiah we'll be doing and again it's by Brioni I will leave her Instagram down below so you guys can check out her page um and then the next two are actually from our daily bread now this one i've done before several times but i decided to redo it and take it more seriously because the first time the first few times i didn't take it too seriously so this is jesus's blueprint for prayer by hayden robinson it's applying the lord's prayer to your life and it is six studies in one so it's kind of like six days of a study um so we have this and I, like i said i've done it before they walk you through they give you some information they tell you to pull out your bibles it's a great study but um, i'm going to do it devotional wise and since we since i had so many copies of this i've been through it so many times but this time i'm going this going into it very serious and prepared to um actually study it for real so we have this then i have this one on simon peter a rock to move by god by bill crowder and it's all about spiritual courage and again six studies so six days so this is like 12 days here plus the other two um studies right there so um we have that and the last one i'm going to be doing was one that i requested for review and it's romance and redemption by timothy cross it's um a sort of like study on the book of ruth so i'm excited to get into this we know i love ruth and it's not that long at all it's like 62 pages so i could definitely read this in one day if i wanted to i'm not sure if i'm going to do a chapter a day or what but um it's 62 pages long that ain't long at all so we have this so these are the sort of like devotionals that i'm going to be doing for the month so let's get into the prompt so the first prompt was to use a color generator i don't know why this never works when i do it this way so let's try it this way that works yeah so use a color generator that's the first prompt um and for that what popped up was this color here it's brown it looked brown to me it looks like a light brown but when i looked it up it said copper rust um so i have two books for that the first one is rc jones the prince of wisdom i'm not gonna lie i finished this in a day <laughs> um i read this on sunday november 1st so i read this in a day it's 88 pages this book is a it's a five star read for sure but i personally gave it a four star just because i wanted so much more out of this book um i'm actually gonna bump it to a 4.5 star rating this book is only 88 pages long it is so good and it's all about godly wisdom versus the world's wisdom and 
beautiful beautiful middle green fancy that um can definitely speak to the hearts of young and old love it so much so i read this already so that would technically compete that prompt um because it kind of has those colors here and then we have son of the father by andrew stone which is all about bar barbus i think that's how you say barabus um which was basically the guy that was traded for jesus to be crucified so it's that story um both of these books as well as the one from timothy cross sorry if you guys hear all that noise but the one from timothy cross are from ambassador international i did request some books from them so i'm trying to get through those books this month um so that i can send my reviews of course to them but um yeah this one is on barbus and his uh kind of walk to faith and understanding his mindset at that time in biblical fiction of course and um i'm excited for this book um it uses the niv translation so i'm excited for this i forgot to mention that the prince of wisdom is a middle grade story but it does use the new king james translation which i was blown away by this book like the fact that it used the nkjv in um, a middle grade novel and it was so easy to read it was so fun um and there's a dragon in this book <laughs> let's just say i loved it um but yeah we have the son of the father right yeah son of the father so that book also again it has like that rusty brown copper color going okay so the next one was to read the highest book on your shelf I'm trying to get it so you guys can see <laughs> so read the highest book on your shelf and by shelf i meant on my goodreads shelf and i don't think i have all of my books on my tbr and most of the highest rated ones i have read so i did have to look it up and what popped up was this book here wilderness wanderer by jennifer jennings it is the second book in her faith wanderers series i think this one is called faith wanderers if i'm wrong the right title will be on the screen but this one came in at a 4.68 4.68 rating star rating um so yes the second book i did read the first one which was the midwives of Mo moses which was really good uh that was a good book so i'm excited to dive into this one um i think this one follows not miriam is it miriam i think it follows miriam I think it does let me let me get on good reason tell you guys because I, I don't want to tell you out the wrong information but I think it follows Miriam because the first one followed Pua and um the other midwife of Moses so yeah it follows Miriam and um Moses and Aaron in this book but mainly focusing on Miriam so biblical fiction all about Miriam so I'm excited to dive into that book here. So again, it's Wilderness Wanderer by Jennifer Jennings. I do plan to get physical copies of her books really soon because I have read two other books from her and enjoyed them. Um, so we have that. And then the last prompt was, let's, let's get this going. It is to read a pastel book. Hopefully that is focused, but read a pastel book. And I don't own that many pastel books. In my collection most of my books are darker colors or just straight up bold not many pastel the one pastel book that i did have i did read already and it's by terry ferris i think this is terry ferris and i can't remember the name of the book but the, the cover is here i've read that book already and i was going to reread it i know the sequel just came out so i couldn't want the sequel but i don't own a physical copy of it and i wanted to read a physical book so for that i'm gonna go with the key to love by betsy st amant and this came out already um it is a contemporary romance and it's just straight pastel like you can see straight pastel colors everywhere um with some cute cookies on the back but um yeah it's a contemporary romance so we have this i'm not going to be too upset if i don't get to this book so yeah like i again i read it quickly for a review that had to do for uh rebel but i haven't like read it read it the way i like to read so I'm gonna try to find an audiobook for this but if I can't I'm not gonna stress myself I'll just carry it over into December if anything but we have this book so um moving on now to all the other books that I'm gonna be reading I'm waiting for that book's cover to pop up but I do have other books so of course we have book 10 The Remnant um from Tim LaHaye and Jeremy Jenkins which is the 10th book like I said from the Left Behind series and I'm excited for this I have high hopes for this the tab for this says on the brink of Armageddon so yeah and that 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 just looks crazy to me so it's the 10th book I'm excited which means I'm three books like three books left so excited we have that um and then we have the three books that were sent to me from Barbara and Brighton. I think it's Brighton or Britain. I still don't even know. I probably should have figured this out by now. I apologize if you are watching this video. But um, by the time I do my reviews and my reading blogs, I'll have the name together. But these three books, if you haven't seen my unboxing for that, click the I to go to that video. But we have Providence, which is all about Hannah's journey. Um, the tag for that says, when the prophet of Israel refuses to heal her, Hannah flees Jerusalem and is captured by an enemy with a curse 
all his own um and is this the one yeah, so this is the retelling of uh, the biblical fiction retelling of the story of um, the Assyrian commander, the Assyrian army commander, uh, Naaman, and the servant girl from Second Kings chapter five. So that's his book, and I'm excited for this book. It's the first book in her Tribes of Israel series. So we have that. Um, the second book is going to be the, the third book in the Tribes of Israel series, and it is Jerusalem Rising: Ada's Journey. And it says when Ada volunteers to rebuild Jerusalem's walls, she soon discovers not all Judah's enemies lie outside the crumbling rock. So this is a retelling of the book of Nehemiah. Um, it has some. It's, it's focusing on Nehemiah. I think chapters one through eighteen. Don't quote me, correct scriptures are on the screen, but about the time when Nehemiah was rebuilding the wall and there were a few daughters from this guy. I can't remember the guy's name because I read about it also when I read a book from Lynn Austin, <laughs> but um, he had his daughters help him rebuild the wall. So that's what this is about. I'm excited for this as well because I love me some Nehemiah. And then the last one is going to be Lioness um, by her and it is the first book in he her daughters of Zelophad. I say Zelophad, but I don't think I'm saying the name right. I don't think that's how you say it because my first lady actually preached a message on a Sunday and she said it completely different. So I need to know how to say that. But um, it's in numbers, if I'm not mistaken, the scriptures are on the screen. But um, it's following the older daughter of the five daughters of Zelophad um, in their journey. Um, so it's Mala's journey, Lioness, to keep her orphan sisters together. Mala must boldly request an inheritance that will change history. So it's basically about the, the, the um, daughters of Zelophad that requested inheritance at the time right after, I believe it's Numbers 17, 16, 17, when they requested their inheritance because they had no men to, um, you know, th their father had no sons. He only had five daughters. And um, Moses went to the priest and he also went to God and God said to give them their inheritance, that scripture. So we have that. So we have these books and I'm excited to be reading them. They will all have individual reading blogs. I'm excited for that. So we have that. Um, then we have my buddy read with my sis, Stephanie. Um, and that book is going to be The Gilded Lady. I showed this book last month and that wasn't the right book. So bear with me. But it is the right book for this month. So The Gilded Lady, I will be reading. We did read The Spice King a while ago. Loved it. And this one just picks up right after The Spice King following the sister. I don't forgot the sister's name. Her, her name was on the screen. But we have that book. Um, and that is a historical fiction story. Um, and then me and Steph are also going to be buddy reading another book. It is not a Christian related book, but I'm going to share it with you guys because it is a book that we're reading together. And it is called Legend Born by Tracy Dion. This is a YA fantasy. It's a King Arthur retelling, but with a black cast of characters and magic and a secret society. And I'm super excited for this. I have heard about this all over BookTube. Um, so I'm super excited that she saw this and wanted to read it with me. So I'm excited. It is a pretty hefty book, kind of, sort of. It's about almost 500 pages long, um, but it ain't nothing to me. You know, I love reading and I love the cover one because black girl love, yes, love the hair. But if you look closely at the cover, there's like slight foiling on it, which is so dope. And like, again, I've, I've heard so many great things about this um from many booktubers so i'm super excited to get into this um but then the last christian book i'll be reading for the month is fortunes fall by katherine barger here we go this is a ya christian dystopian and it is loosely based off of daniel and i believe nehemiah but if i'm wrong then i'll put exactly who it is but i think it's daniel and nehemiah i know daniel for sure because that's what like got me but i think she also said nehemiah Again, it'll be on the screen, but I was supposed to read this like a week ago, so I'm going to just quickly read it in a day. Um, so yeah, I have some other books that I also will be reading, but I can't show them to you guys right now, but um, they are by an author named Jay Blessing. They are really, really short novellas. There are four of them. I'll just pop them up here on the screen right now, so they're probably flashing all four covers, but I have those. They're really, really short, not long at all, um, and I'm going to read those on my phone because I need to get to those as soon as possible um and i think that's pretty much it as far as like what i'll be reading for the month of november um november i decided that i wasn't going to partake in any of my like usual readathons and stuff because i need to like really catch up on a lot of review books not just for the publishers but for people who are like self-published indie authors um and i feel bad not getting to them so i'm trying to make sure that i catch up on all of my reading before the end of december that way in january i can have a fresh start with the year and not feel bad or feel stressed or worried about 
reading things that I was supposed to read years ago. I just, I don't want to do that going into 2021. And 2021 is definitely going to be different for me as far as taking requests and um, doing reviews because I don't like to be stressed. As much as I love reading and I can read quickly, I don't want to stress myself out towards the end of the year. So um, yeah, it seems like a lot. Let's see. We have the four novellas that I just sent. We have two ebooks. So that's already six, right? Six books, seven, eight, right? Eight. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. 20 books, but we have a nonfiction, which I'm going to take my time reading. We have, what, five Bible studies out of the Devos, and a lot of them are not that long, so I can quickly read them. And I will listen to audiobooks. I'm going to try to basically read one book a day. We'll see how that goes, because I still haven't figured out my regular TBR for, like, my secular books, which I need to figure that out. But yeah i'm gonna end this video i didn't mean for this video to be super long so yeah i'm gonna go well I'm, I'm gonna go make another video you'll see me in the same outfit so yeah and shout out real quick to my sis um lady carleen she has a company called k's brooch boutique and you guys have heard me talk about it before but i'm wearing one of her brooches a little tiny bee she had the tiny bee and then she had the big bee she has some new stuff out that i did pick an order of course <laughs> gotta support her so i will share with you guys those because they're like pearls and stuff so cute but um yeah i'm gonna go make another video real quick for you guys and i'll see you guys in the next video